Okay, so we've got an opportunity for some questions. A couple of questions. Oh, there's a question there. Okay. From Jason. Uh, my question is about the anticipation of the growth of that sort of storing of information and uh, the challenges that that causes, uh, brings to uh, the uh, British Library. So is that a question for well, it was us sort of, or the Turing? Yes, it was sort uh, of a question for our last speaker, mm -hmm. in a way. This is certainly a, a challenge, and in, Andy in, in his team and, and others may be able to, to answer better. I mean, one opportunity, of course, is that there is a lot of duplication in the archives and understanding what is already captured, and therefore, uh, we want to know that it was reevaluated, but exactly the same at a later date and point in time uh, is something we want to to store, but we may not actually need to restore that data. So there's, I, I think there are more efficient ways uh, that it could possibly be stored as to actually provisioning the, <laughs> the long-term storage and, and making this possible. Um, I, I would have to defer to the, the British Library, certainly, on, on sort of that sustainability aspect. But I think we can make, be smart at least about the resource and, and the way it's used. OK, another question. I don't know who the question is for, but I'll ask it anyway. Um, bravo for Microsoft on making both the data and the API available. Thank you for that. I was surprised to learn that the funding bodies require open access for any sort of research result to, to, to research results that are funded by public money, but they don't require open data. So for us who want to do, for example, natural language processing on some e-text or, or any sort of uh, machine readable data, sometimes we have to crawl through the whole interface because they don't provide the data. Um, is there going to be, you know, do you see any trends for open data to be a trend in academia, or is sort of this uh, academic publishing mm -hmm. culture sort of preventing it? What can we expect as you know the so next generation? I can answer that personally because we just launched data.bl.uk today, which is 42 data sets which are open. Um, they may not be your traditional data sets if you, from, from a science perspective. So for example, we have six volumes of pub signs. That's a data set. <laughs> Um, 90,000 digitized playbills from 1602 to 1902, for example. Um, but so, you know, we, we are, I mean, part of labs is all about trying to get people to do things with the data. But maybe I will now bat that back to the Turing Institute. Specifically, when it became a mandatory requirement for EPSRC, which the university got half its funding from. So, um, so I think it, it, it's, it's across the entire all domains. And the, the, I don't know if you know the, um, uh, you know, there are lots of groups, and the European Commission is pushing it very hard. This idea of open science as well. So I, th I think everyone's moving, you know, to do open science. And there's a philosophically, everyone's agreed. Practically, <laughs> it's a nightmare. So, um, so yeah, it, it, is a, it is a challenge. To give you some context, Microsoft ingests about a petabyte a day of data. So we, we can handle that sort of volume of data, and it's, it's growing. But um, so the infrastructures are there, um, but it, you know, we're not quite there yet in terms of um, actually working with all the research community. So I'm sort of conscious of time, so I think... I'll, I'll be very quick, just uh, to add on, on the researcher yeah. side of it. Um, for any research grant application you put in now, you have to include things about research data management. And I think you have to have really good reason these days why you can't make your data open, because reuse is so important. Um, and when it gets evaluated, um, if there's anything wrong with that, people will come back and the technical reviewers will, will ask you to justify why you're not making it open. So again, I think it's, it's really moving in that direction. Very quick comment from that gentleman there. All, all due respect to the British Library for doing this uh, collaboration, I just wanted to ask um, what, what is needs to be done or is being done already like for other libraries or institutes in the UK or around the world um, to actually have collaborations of um, data interportable between 
one institute and the other? I, don't, I know that's not about the BL, but is that something else or the next level? I think there's lots of examples of that. I do. Yep. And then, then you can swap. <laughs> yeah. okay. So, so, um, so uh, sort of the interoperability and exchange of data, obviously incredibly important. Um, linking of data to the scientific record in a way that it's uh, traceable, trackable, and, and reusable, also incredibly important. Um, there's uh, a lot of work going on in that area. Um, and I think that's not, uh, that, that will be a, a great discussion um, at a, a full-size, you know, conference like this. Um, uh, uh, I do encourage people who are interested in this from the perspective of the research communities, especially to think about the uh, Research Data Alliance, um, uh, which will be having uh, its uh, plenary uh, uh, next, uh, early next year in Barcelona. Um, which brings together researchers uh, and infrastructure providers all around the world trying to address exactly um, exactly this problem. Um, so so um, uh, can I uh, just, let's thank our, our, our speakers from that last session. Um, really, really interesting. Um, um, uh, I want to do a couple of the things that uh, um, Mahendra can't can't do um, at, at the end of the day here. Um, so so one which he could just well do is you know I I um, I thought it was a really interesting day. I saw I feel it's like a snapshot of where digital research and digital scholarship um, is at the moment, um, and we're seeing really deep collaborations right between researchers, uh, computer scientists, uh, AI researchers, um, folks in the arts and humanities. Um, looking together to figure out how to solve some of these problems of incorporating uh, data and digital content deeply into their work and then seeing it go well beyond the research community, artistic, uh, entrepreneurial um, teaching and learning and so on. So um, I find that as a kind of a, a state of the, you know, a, a state of play in 2016 to be really encouraging. Uh, and I think the direction of travel is, is superb. Um, the second thing is um, evaluation. So we've done four of these. We try to make them better every year. Uh, the way we make them better is with your input and feedback. So please, um, there a link to from the program should be uh, an online form. And for those of you who eschew the digital um, uh, materials, there are paper forms downstairs, uh, but we're gonna digitize them um, anyway. Um, okay. <clears throat> Because um, that's what we do here. Uh, so, so, so uh, uh, next thing. Um, so, so it's really hard to put together uh, such a fantastic uh, uh, day-long conference as this one. It takes a lot of work, um, some late nights, a couple of weekends, um, uh, some early mornings, and I'd like to really thank the team. So, Mahendra, um, uh, Ben Osteen, uh, and uh, Hannah. Um, up in the back there, who did a superb job. And so I'd just like to take a moment and, and thank them explicitly. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Um, and of course, they didn't do it just by themselves. Uh, we had actually a lot of help from colleagues in the Digital Scholarship Department uh, and across uh, the library. Um, so my thanks to uh, you, also to um, the project board members, uh, um, and a really exceptional advisory board, of which several are in the room uh, here today. They help uh, to inspire us, to keep us on track, um, to keep us focused, um, to challenge us, and to um, enable us to make this, you know, as good an effort uh, as we possibly can. So uh, if we could, just thanks to our advisory board and the other folks at the library who have helped um, put it together. Um, I can just do two more of these. Um, so, so, so we saw from a lot of people today who have um, entered for the competitions and awards and who have received um, awards, mentions, uh, and, and uh, runners-up roles. Um, you know, this wouldn't have happened without them. And in fact, without people taking some risks and taking some chances, um, uh, digital research, um, especially in the arts and humanities, is not going to happen in the way that it could. So um, I'd really like to um, also thank them. And uh, um, finally, um, all of you, uh, I thought it was a really good day, some great conversations, some really excited chats in the, in the hallway um, during the breaks. Um, I hope it was uh, lovely for you. 
Um, so uh, thanks to all of you for coming. So give yourselves a hand as well. And, and that's, that's all for today, except to say, um, uh, come join us for a glass of wine and uh, safe travels home.